over the next few weeks, I'm, I'm going to be looking at, um, at Matthew, uh, probably Matthew chapter 5 and that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but that's not for today. But I'm going to touch into that really at times. And praise God for his goodness towards us. I thank God for the testimonies that we've heard today. What this says to us is that God is real. That Jesus is still alive today. Amen. Amen. Jesus is still alive today. And he's doing great and mighty things. You know, some churches will tell you that healing is not for today. Well, that leaves us shortchanged, don't it? That leaves us in a mess. It leaves us in the hands of man and man's wisdom, which is sad. But, you know, God has made a way for each and every one of us. The gifts are still available today. The gifts of God that Jesus gave to the church at the very beginning of time are still available today. Are you the church? Are you the church of Jesus Christ? Well, the gifts are available to you and to me right now. Right? And Jesus said, you have not because we didn't ask. We need to start asking. We need to be questioning and asking for God to begin to move. We need him to move. If God doesn't move, we're dead. The church lives on the breath of God. The church lives on the breath of the Spirit of God. And that's how God wants to move in our lives in such a powerful way. Turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 6. John's Gospel, chapter 6. Verse 1. And after these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And a great multitude was following him because they were seeing the signs which he had, was performing on those who were sick. Amen? Amen? Yeah. This is why people were following Jesus. Now, does it not say in Scripture that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Well, if that statement there was about Jesus doing signs, wonders, and miracles, and the people were following him because the signs and the wonders and the miracles were happening, then the church, who is the bride of Christ, and the church is you and I, (coughs) and you and I have Christ in us, then surely logic says that signs and wonders should be with us. And then people will want to come to church because the answers are in Christ Jesus. The answers are in Jesus, not in man. Not in the man's system. Not in the next government that we get in power because we've already got a government in power whose throne is higher than any throne, whose throne is exalted amongst all the thrones of the kingdom of this earth. Amen? Amen. He says, and Jesus went up, verse 3, on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews was at hand, 
And therefore, lifting up his eyes, seeing a great multitude was coming to him, he said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread that these may eat? Wow. Where are we going to buy bread? And in verse 6, and this he was saying to test Philip, for Jesus himself knew what he was intending to do. You know, sometimes Jesus might ask you a question. It might be a question just to test where your faith is. Because guess what? God knows what he's going to do. Amen? God knows. And I know I've read parables and stories where Jesus said, if you ask him for bread, he's not going to give you a stone. Is he? No. No. He's going to give you something good. So why should we be afraid? Why should we be afraid? What is God? If I do this, what will God do to me? As long as we're walking and trusting him and we're doing what we feel right is right in God and it lines up with the word of God, then God will honor and bless and work in our lives. In verse 7, Philip answered and said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them for everyone to receive a little. Do you know what he was saying there? He was saying six months wages, because that's what he's talking about here, 200 denarii. He said six months wages of a person could not buy enough bread to feed all of these people. Think about it for a minute what the average salary is, that that would not be enough to buy food to feed all these people that were following Jesus because of the signs, the wonders, and the miracles that were happening. We know they weren't committed to him. We understand that. But they heard the message. And today the church needs to be giving out the true message of the Lord Jesus Christ and not compromising to what the world wants from the church. The church is here not because of what the world wants. The church is here because of what God wants to give humanity back. That's why the church is here. It's not to pander to people's emotion and to pander to circumstances and situations. It's to bring glory to God. It's to bring the kingdom of heaven back on the earth. It's to deliver the people from the hand of Satan. It's to set captives free from the bondage of sin, sickness and disease and bring them into a new relationship with Heavenly Father. That's what the church is here about. Not to have whist drives and sewing classes. Not that I'm against those things. I mean, it's good when people can get to fellowship and do something of of like manner. But let me tell you this, the main thrust of the message of the church today should be Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only. And the word of God. And if God says no, the answer is no. Yeah. Ah, well, things have changed. Things have changed. Well, God hasn't. No. He's still the same. When he created the universe, God has not changed. The sun was shining however millions and billions of years ago, whatever the scientists try and tell us. It was still shining. And the person that created it was God Almighty. And today God wants you and I to know his power and his presence. You know, we, we hear of how Sheila, unable to breathe properly through her nose, unable to smell. Now Mick's got to use Life Boy soap and... Uh, underarm perspirant now because 
It's going to cost him a fortune. Because Sheila has now, because God has ministered healing power to her and has set her free from this bondage, Hallelujah. Now she can smell the flowers. Yeah. You need to come up to Cusless. We've got some trees up there and the aroma that is coming off these trees at the moment is fantastic. It really is. Um, and so is the pollen. It's all over my black car. You know, I mean, it's going, my car was going yellow the other day with it. But these trees, when we take the dog for a walk, I go, wow. This is what God has created us. Given these things to us. And it's great to hear how God is still healing today. Amen. And we've got to keep believing. Rob's blood pressure. Yeah. Praise God. I, I must say, I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening on blood pressure at the moment. Because for the last five days, I have not taken a blood pressure tablet because I check my blood pressure every morning and it has been absolutely normal for a young man. Yeah, I'm like 129 over 56 sort of thing. I'm like, glory to God, hallelujah. Hey, I'm going to have my, I've got to have my youth renewed. I know that, I, I believe it. And you know, I have been wrestling with things these last few weeks and the enemy's been pushing and pushing and beating. And I know for a fact that I've got to get more time in here. This is what keeps us free, the word of God. The prayers of the saints sets the captives free, honestly, because those prayers, if they're, they're set on this book, the word of God, it brings deliverance, it brings healing. Jesus gave us, in Matthew he tells us, I give you all power. He didn't say I give you some power. He said I give you all power. So whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in the heavenlies, etc. And there's this, you know, taking that authority. I don't mean just, it means knowing, in this it means knowing the mind and the will of God. And the mind and the will of God is to see Satan cast out he was cast out of heaven he's going to be cast out of the earth he's going to be cast out of each and every one that is worshipping him if they'll surrender their life to Christ and true surrender means continuing on I mean you know there's been some crusades being going on the Billy Graham crusade just recently down in London. A few hundred people have been giving their lives to Christ. It's great. But the next stage is continuing. Yeah. It's continuing. It's continuing. That's what it's about. It's not just doing that and saying, I've got my ticket, I'm okay now. I can go and sin as much as I want. I can go back to my old lifestyle and do what I want because I've got this golden ticket. All that glitters is not necessarily gold. And you see, we need to have that relationship. It's, you know, the, it, the just raising of the hand, making that first step is the beginning of a journey into a new eternity. Amen. It's a journey into a new eternity. You see, today at the moment, these people are journeying in an eternity. Amen. They're going to spend an eternity in hell, or they're going to spend an eternity with, etern with our eternal fa Father God in heaven. Yeah. And they have to make that choice. But you can't stand on the fence and do this. I'll just stop between the two, you know, and hopefully I'll land at the right time when the trumpet sounds. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us that are alive, oh, glory to God, that have gone through the fire, shall be caught up to meet it. No, come on, let's go in glory. Coming back for a precious, beautiful, 
glorious bride. It's not a woman that's hiding herself in a corner like a rag bag and, you know, nothing to wear. The church needs to be glorious. The church has to be the example and people will look and see the Christ that is in you. Don't let fears hold you down. Don't let fears stop you. Verse 8 of chapter 6 of John's Gospel. One of his disciples, Andrew. Hallelujah. I'm an Andrew. He's Simon Peter's brother. And he said to Jesus, there's a lad here who's got five barley loaves and two fish. And then he trips himself up. But what are they here? To, for all these people? He started off right. And then he, he said, but, oh, but yeah, maybe, maybe not. You know, maybe behind him there was one or two of the disciples saying, what, <laughs> what does he think Jesus is going to do with that? Hey, Andrew, don't be sure. Give it a rest. But no. Jesus said, get the people to sit down. It was a grassy place and they sat. He sat them down. He says, and they were fi about 5,000 in number, men. There's going to be some kids around. There's going to be some ladies around. So there's going to be more than 5,000. And he takes five small loaves. This is this child's lunch, by the way. So this get, now either this kid is like, you know, quite rotund, or... The loaves are small. Yeah. And it says, and two small fish. He didn't have one of those fish that is in my pond. Yay big, you know. So these are small fish. So it's not a big meal. But Jesus takes it and offers up thanksgiving and prayer and steps out in faith begins to break he puts it into 12 baskets and the 12 disciples begin to go out to the people and feed them I, I wonder what went through their minds you know when when they had this basket and they, they sort of, the first one you know they probably lined up waiting for Jesus to Break a loaf. And, and they're thinking to themselves, this will be good, won't it? And the first disciple, you know, Peter, probably, you know, I'll get up front. Looks at this basket. Looks at Jesus. How did you do that? Jesus pushes him away and he, he moves on. Thomas, <laughs> bless him. He's at the back of the line. He thinks, I'll not have to do anything. Because there's no way there's going to be anything left, is there? I've only got five loaves and two small fish. Thomas arrives and Jesus is still breaking bread. He's looking at him and thinking... How are you doing this? Thomas is sent on his way and off he goes. Must have been a while feeding 5,000 people. Think about it. It didn't just, you know, work just like that. And the, the baskets, you know, they're going along with the baskets and saying, oh, here you go, take no, no one takes a much. <laughs> Somebody down here, you know, there's a crowd over here. 
And then they come in over one. It's like, well, they were, well, they were either sick. Well, they, they, I don't I have no idea. It don't tell you. Don't be so awkward. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to get any. And there they were. They were going out with feeding. Must have taken an hour or so, do you think? Yeah. And then they come back to Jesus and, you know, Peter went out first, so he's back first and he's like, I've got just as much as when I left. And when Thomas gets back, can you imagine 12 disciples? Hey, how much you got left? How much you got left? Well, I can't believe it. Well, I mean, come on, let's be, you know, let's be realistic. They were fishermen. How did he do it? How's he done it? I mean, just look. We could go round again. That little boy went home with an abundance. How did he take, I know, go on, the next question. How did the little boy carry 12 baskets home? Well, guess what? There were people from his village and they helped him carry him back. And I guarantee when they got back to the village, they had a party. You see, it didn't end there. It continues on. Because God has given to us an abundance. When you give something to God, God gives back to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. This little boy gave five loaves, two fishes to Jesus and went home with 12 baskets. God can provide. God is able to provide for us. Let faith arise and its enemies be scattered. And our faith has to arise. Our trust in God has to arise. I, I believe that for signs, wonders and miracles, these things are going to happen because God is God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not changed. No matter what is happening in the world today, he still rules the universe. And Jesus is still seated at the right hand of God. And the Holy Spirit is still willing to be at work on the earth and in the lives of the church, if the church will allow Am I right or am I wrong? We need to be a people. We used to sing that old chorus, running over, running over, my cup's full and running over. Since the Lord saved me, I'm as happy as can be. My cup's full and it's running over. Amen. In other words, you're going to get covered in something. You're going to get covered in Jesus Amen. when you come into, into contact with a, pe- with a people whose cup is full. Amen. You see, God does not want you to have a cup that's half full. No. Or some people would say, my cup's half empty. Amen. Whichever way around you want to think, That's not what God wants, because God wants you to have a cup that is full and running over. That you spill it over people. Oh, sorry, (laughs) just spilt some of Jesus over you. Oh, I just spilt the power of God over you. Did you feel it? I'm dripping with it. It just, last was it last Sunday we were praying for just felt like we were dripping with the presence 
of Almighty God. We need to be dripping in his presence. Stop trying to work it out. Just do it. That's the problem today. Everybody wants to analyze it. Dissect it. It's like me trying to fix a, um, a clock that's got gears and springs. And I, know, I mean, I can take engines to bits and things like that, but don't give me a clock. You'll get it back, but in bits, I promise you. I've had a couple of messes in it, and I think, oh, I can't be bothered, that's somebody else's job. You see, the thing is, you need specialist tools for that. And it's like, now. Don't try and dissect the word of God and try and, yeah, but this and but that. You, it's God. It's his voice. It's him, the voice of the Lord. That's what this book is. Verse 12, and they, get, they were filled, and he said to his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments. People had eaten to the full. And they've still got some bread and some fish left. Have you got something left in God that you can give to somebody else? What about your anointing? You see, I believe each and every one of us should have that anointing from God laid upon us. And that anointing of God should just be beginning to flow through us. And it touches and changes people's lives. People are looking for the signs and wonders. There were the skeptics. There were the religious people there. So it all happened. Still didn't believe. still try to make, make it out that it was all false and that this wasn't real. But over 5,000 pe people that day yeah. experienced the goodness of God to their lives. Praise his wonderful name. You and, he, you and I need to realize today what small thing you have yeah. when you bring it to Jesus it will multiply Amen. it will multiply how many times as many times that it is needed to multiply to because God does not shortchange people there is always a leftover. There is always an abundance that's left over from God. So let's splash it around. Amen. Let's press that anointing out into people's lives. We know that when it came to the end, many that had followed left him. He's the Son of God. He's perfect. He said and did nothing wrong in the eyes of God. I didn't say in the eyes of man, did I? I mean, he upset the, the religious system. But in the eyes of God, this is my beloved son Amen. in whom I am well pleased.
Let's look to hearing similar words from God for each and every one of us. Well done. Good. Faithful. Servant. Because that's what God wants to say to us. That don't mean that we're being pressurized. It's just, it needs to be just, it just comes out naturally. It just spills out of us. Hey, guess what God did for me today? What? And you begin to tell them what Jesus has done for you. He's alive. He's risen. He's ascended. And he's glorified. And he needs to be in our lives in all its fullness. The devil will try and replace Jesus in any way he can. The devil will try and speak into your minds to stop you listening to the voice of God. Circumstances would seek to stop you tuning in to what God wants you to hear. And then when you make that mistake, when you listen to the devil, when you've not done what you thought you should have done and it's the right thing to do, then the devil will come back and he begins to torment you. See, you failed again, didn't you? You made that mistake. See, you're really no good. You'll never make it. You know... On my own, I won't make it. The only way I'm going to make it is when I keep Jesus by my side. When I take hold of him and keep him by my side, then I'm going to make it. Because he knows the way. And as we follow him, we stay close to him. We will see God moving in power in our lives for his praise and for his glory. I just want to encourage you with just these few words today. No matter what is before us, no matter what the challenge is, the answer is in Almighty God. The answer is in through Jesus Christ. The answer is through the word of God. This is the answer. And when we look into the, this book, when we talk to our Heavenly Father, he will speak back to us and he will reveal to us what we need to do. Follow him. Follow him. You can't save nobody. Neither can I. You just point them to Jesus. You bring an introduction. You introduce them to Jesus. You can encourage them. But you cannot live somebody else's life. Because let's be honest, you've all on living your life. You've all on keeping your life straight, pure and clean. So why do you think, why do we think we can live somebody else's life for them? We can be living examples. Read and known of God. People need to see the Christ in us. And beyond that, each and every one of us has a free will to choose. Choose you this day, Joshua said, who you will serve. And Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. That's it. And we have to stand by that.
and we have to serve God. Commit, make that commitment as an individual and say, I'm here to serve God. Whatever it might be, but I'm going to serve God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Whatever's going on around me, I'm here to serve God. Yeah. Whatever the circumstances are going off around me, I'm going to serve God. Amen. No matter what the devil throws at me, I, the only thing I can do that will bring me success is to serve God. Amen. There is no other way. There is not another way at all. Some people will tell you, oh, by doing good works. Your works are as filthy rags. When we weigh everything that we've done, when it goes on the scales, God will turn around and say, you've been weighed in the balances and on your own merits you're short you've been found wanting but that's when we have to say but I have an advocate the Lord Jesus and when Jesus comes on to the scales he tips the balance in our favour amen and the balance goes in our favour and we thank Praise God for Jesus. Amen. He has saved us, Amen. redeemed us, and brought us into the presence of the Amen. Father, Almighty God. Yes. There's an abundance in Christ. Amen. Let's receive that abundance for his praise and for his glory. Amen. Father, we just pray that today, yes. Lord, as we seek to follow you, Amen. as we seek even to walk through the mist, and the darkness of this world, that Lord, your light and your breath will show us the way through, Amen. will bring us into your presence. Father, will that Lord, the light that comes from you will reach out, and Lord, it will bounce off and touch others around us as it flows through each and every one of us, Father. I pray, O oh God, that we shall see Many signs and wonders for your praise yes. and for your glory. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The Lord bless you all.